Hi, I'm Glenn from the Android Audio team. I focus on performance, and in audio, that means one thing, latency, the time it takes for signal to pass through a system. For example, from the microphone, to your app, to the operating system, to an audio codec, an amplifier, and finally out to the speakers. Basically, there's a delay in how long it takes sound to move through your CPU all the way to your ears. As the delay gets bigger, that's where buffering comes in. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me explain this using a chicken. Imagine a chicken wants to cross the road. It's an unusual road. The cars all move at the same speed, and they're all the same distance apart. Maybe they're self-driving cars. Not too hard for our chicken. If she makes a run for it between cars, she'll get across safely. But there's an obstacle between the chicken and the other side of the road, a fence and a gate. The colonel manages the gate. He has nothing against chickens crossing the road, but he likes to keep things neat and orderly. So the colonel only opens the gate when he thinks it's time. He opens the gate right after a car passes. So there's plenty of time for the chicken to cross the road before the next car comes. The colonel works hard. He cares about his job. But every once in a while, the colonel gets distracted and doesn't open the gate on time. And if he's too late, Ugh. The chicken in this analogy is the code that processes audio data, both in your application and in the Android audio framework. The overall traffic flow represents the audio hardware, which consumes data at a constant rate, no matter what. Each car is a deadline. Feed me data now! In Android, audio samples are grouped together into fixed size buffers. The space between the cars is the buffer size. You can think of this buffer size as either samples or time. They're equivalent. Each time a buffer is completed, the hardware raises an interrupt request for a handler to service the audio hardware. I ate that buffer, but I'm still hungry. Feed me more data. After servicing the hardware, the handler wakes up a task to do the remaining work. Now, audio tasks are among the highest priority real-time tasks in the system. So, an audio I.O. completion preempts the current unrelated task, and we run the audio task instead. Let's return to our chicken analogy. The kernel with a C is the Linux kernel with a K. The scheduler decides when the audio code should run, and the context switch makes it so. And this unfortunate situation? Well, that's what happens if our code doesn't meet the audio hardware's deadline, just because the kernel was distracted. If this were video or UI code, we'd say that we just janked or dropped a frame. It looks bad, but it's not a huge problem if it's only occasional. But nobody likes it when you jank audio. We call it popcorn, and it sounds awful, like this. If you're a manufacturer of an Android device and your QA team hears popcorn, that's going to be a hard problem for you to solve. Remember, audio tasks are among the highest priority real-time tasks in the system. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, there are many things that can distract the kernel with a K from running our audio tasks on time. For example, a random kernel module, perhaps an unrelated device driver, disables interrupts or disables preemption for too long. Either way, this kind of excessive disabling will delay the kernel context switch code from switching to the right audio task on time. We use a tool called SysTrace to visualize this. Here's a real example of a preemption latency bug. The audio writes should be regular, like our cars. But zooming in, we see that one audio write actually took 130 milliseconds to complete. That's a pop for sure. It's like the kernel with a C, distracted from opening the gate perhaps by a long phone call, so that chicken didn't get released on time. Now, what would you do if this happened to you? Well, the easiest thing to do is just bloat up your buffers like this puffer fish. Just keep increasing the buffer sizes until the popcorn stops, rather than understanding and really fixing the root causes. I have to admit, I've done this once or twice also. So, it's pretty tempting to do it that way, but so wrong. 
uh-uh, I'm not going to do it that way anymore. My job now is to find all of those places in the kernel where this happens and fix them. If you've ever looked at the Linux kernel, you know how large and complicated a project this might be. It involves testing and reviewing and fixing a lot of code. Fortunately, we're not doing this alone. We're working with our silicon and device partners to fix such bugs. This will allow buffer sizes to be made smaller and reduce total audio latency. Together, we've made progress in reducing latency. Many audio applications are now possible that weren't before. Check out these resources to learn how you can take advantage of the improvements already available. Now there's more to latency than distracted kernels. Look for other videos in this series as we delve into the root causes of latency, what we're doing to reduce it, and how you can take advantage of the improvements to write great audio apps. Thank you for watching. And remember, don't distract the kernel.